Ketogenic diets have become a proven way to lose weight, but what is that weight loss? Is it water, is it muscle, or is it fat? In this video, we show you the actual stats from Dr. Keith's very impressive weight loss uh, to give you that answer. Hi, I'm Dr. Becky. I'm a college instructor of the Science of Nutrition. And I'm Dr. Keith. I'm a chiropractor in private practice for the past 26 years. And you're watching Two Fit Docs, where we turn weight loss resistance into weight loss results. And we do that using Keith as our lab rat here. Better than and guinea pig, it, sure. it's, is it better uh, than a guinea pig? I think guinea pigs. Anyway, okay. uh, and so each week that we give you uh, his update on his weight loss. So, how much did you lose this week? About a pound and a half. Right. Still staying consistent. Yep, very consistent. And um, how much have you lost in the 24 weeks that we've done, been you on your accelerated weight in loss? 24 plan? weeks, I've lost 55 and a half pounds. Awesome. Great. And so the obvious question, that's good, rapid, consistent weight loss. So the obvious questions are, what's exactly melting off of you, right? So let's look at, at water first. Do you think that it has been water weight that you've lost? Um, that's pretty typical when you first start, and it was typical of me. And as, mm -hmm. as you be able to see in my chart, uh, that that first week, I had a pretty substantial weight loss. And I would believe that, you know, the substantial part of that was water. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, that makes a lot of sense because a ketogenic diet is a low carb diet uh, and carbohydrates will hold water, um, water grams. So for every gram of carbohydrate that you take in, it's going to also hold in about three or four grams of, of water. So when you cut down on your carbohydrates, it makes sense that you're rapidly going to lose some of that water. Right, yeah. I think 3.7 is the exact number that okay. they talk about, but right. we've always called it four in the past. Yeah, yeah. Uh, close enough, I guess. But it is, it is a fact that carbs hold water yeah. in your body. Um, but after that first week, then it was a much more steady loss. So after that first week, we want to be certain that we're not losing muscle, right? right. So what have, has your, your charts shown... Right, so I have, a, I have a chart that I have charted my, my total weight, and I've cut that, that bar into fat mass and lean mass. Mm -hmm. And my whole goal was to just maintain my lean mass mm -hmm. uh, and as my, have my fat mass um, reducing you know, through that time, decreasing. Um, and I, I found that it's, it's been really very, very consistent. My lean mass has not changed but a pound or two up and down the different parts and in the last month it's actually increased yeah yeah so so really in an impressive uh, you know finding for for u utilizing this right. diet that it's it's been muscle sparing. muscle sparing um, and so that raises some more questions that you probably have and specifically when we think about muscle we're thinking about exercise and we're thinking about protein, protein. intake so let's share with everybody what your exercise routine has, has been and if it's changed or anything like that. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to keep that very consistent because I, I personally don't think that exercise is a great way to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I think 95% of it is what you eat. So it definitely I, has health benefits, but as far as you're using it just exactly. for weight loss, it's not going to be right. the solution. It's, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. um, so before I started the diet, I was playing hockey once a week and, and going to the gym two or three mornings a week. I'm doing the same exact routine mm -hmm. through this whole 26 weeks. The point is that 27 weeks ago, I was a fat guy playing hockey and I was a fat guy in a gym. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a little bit thinner guy and playing hockey and a little thinner in the gym. Right. So your exercise really has not increased, yet your, your lean has, if not stayed the same, gone up a little bit. Right. So interesting. So that takes us to the next possible thought that comes into everybody's mind, which is protein. So you are on a low-carb diet, which is a ketogenic diet. Um, the obvious question, so did you wrap, you know, really increase your protein intake? My protein intake is actually fairly low. Mm -hmm. um, I remember back, you know, to the days 10 years ago or 15 years, we would drink protein shakes when we were going to the gym, which might contain 100 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. um, and now my daily protein is, is way, way lower than that. Mm -hmm. And when you're younger, uh, and especially if you're active, you, you do have more of a protein requirement. You are a 56 year old guy. Right. Um, so your protein is not going to be as high requirements are not going to be as high as when you're in your twenties, but still 
100 grams at a setting is high for anybody, no yes. matter what your age or, I mean, you'd have to be incredibly active to, for your body to support that, and it can actually be dangerous, which maybe we'll talk about at some point. Right, later. yeah, you're not going to be able to utilize all that. Mm -hmm. so. Right, right, and so even, so some of that excess could possibly get turned into glucose by your liver through gluconeogenesis, right. um, and that's going to defeat your purposes on a low-carb diet. So um, what, we, what we look at with protein, Keith has not increased his protein, yet he's maintaining his, his muscles. So what are the requirements? How much protein do you need? Well, the United States government the, the, sets the, uh, the RDA, the Recommended mm. Daily Allowance, right? <laughs> for, yeah, it's whatever for, it is. For protein, and they set it at 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of total body weight. So, so that's total body weight. When you step on the scale, what does the scale say? Now, that's... Um, possibly a little antiquated of a way of thinking about it because when we look at total body weight, well, your body is made up of fat and it's made up of lean tissue. So if it's not fat, it's, it's lean tissue. Well, when we consider total body weight, um, you don't need proteins to support your fat storage. It's just like a storage closet, right? It doesn't Why would really you want to do that? Anymore? Why would you want to do that? So it would be more accurate to set your protein requirements based on your lean tissue, your muscles and everything else. Um, and so the more recent research shows that we need about 0.75 grams per kilogram of lean muscle. And that's kind of a max, too. That's kind of the top. Right. So let's just give people a, an idea of what that would be. So for you to meet the RDA for the government, first of all, what's your weight the in current, pounds and, and in kilograms? The current weight is 182.8. In kilograms, it's 83 kilograms. Okay. So 83 kilograms, so the RDA but set up by the, the government is, is... 66 and a half. Okay, grams of protein that you would need to, to uh, meet your body's needs. Weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and it's your current weight, right? Not when you started. Right. And then for, uh, for um, the more up-to-date, looking at how much protein you need to support your lean mass is... 52.5. Right. So that's probably a surprisingly low amount... Uh, uh, amount of protein kind of requires some rethinking, but hey, that's what we've been doing with your diet, right? It's a 20% difference. Yeah. And if you look at, and that's at my, my current weight, if you start to take my weight when I started, it would have been a big difference mm -hmm. between what I needed to support my lean mass and what my total body weight was. Mm -hmm. And that's just additional calories and, and nutrition that you don't, you can't utilize and you don't need. And so your body has to do something with it. Yeah. And some of that solution is to put it into storage, into yeah. fat storage. So, you know, we, w our big purpose here uh, in, on this channel is to help you overcome weight loss resistance and get weight loss results. That requires some different thinking for sure. And, that's, and, and it's paid off with your weight loss. Uh, we hope it's paying off for you. And if you aren't following along yet, uh, if you'd like to, we did put together a starter kit for you. Uh, it shares our 0123 strategy, which is a way of keeping fiber in your diet as you're doing a ketogenic diet, something that I think gets ignored a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also, it also includes the foods that Keith has added to his diet and those that he's subtracted. So if you want that starter kit, we'll leave a link here on the video for you. And if you want to keep following along with my progress and how we're doing and some of the research that we're, that mm -hmm. we're uh, coming up with, which is, I think, really interesting, mm -hmm. you need to subscribe down here somewhere mm -hmm. and uh, follow along with us and uh, we'll check back in with you next week. Okay, thanks.